Um, this past week, a lot of times God wakes me up in the middle of the night with a sermon or a verse or a phrase or something. And I used to keep a pad beside my bed, but I don't sleep with my glasses on, so I can't see how to write them down anymore. And so I, I, I've, I've gotten out of the habit of writing down those thoughts that come to me in the middle of the night. Well, this past week, um, a thought came to my mind. And I, I wanted, and I knew it was from God. I just knew it was God speaking to me. You, you, you know when God's talking to you. And so I, I kind of staying awake, staying awake to try to make sure I remember. Because a lot of times something will happen and I forget what it was by the next morning and I can't remember. And so this particular night I got down and I went downstairs and I got a pen and a piece of paper. Just bring it up here, baby. I got a pen and a piece of paper. And in the dark, I wrote down what God was dealing with me about. And it was just a little phrase that said, therefore we have hope. Yes. And the next morning I got up and I scribbled it on that piece of paper where I could actually read what I, what I wrote. And then I was checking my Facebook and Gabby had posted on her Facebook channel a person that was standing there and this little bitty creature that was beside it and something to the effect of I've been looking for you and this little creature's name was Hope and it says I've been here all along. Mm -hmm. I may be small but I've been here all along. Mm -hmm. And so I knew that God wanted me to talk about hope this morning. And so today I want to talk to you about which boat are you in? Um, we're going to be looking at a couple of different passages. One is in Acts chapter 27. Uh, and I'm not going to read the entire story in Acts chapter 27 because probably most of you know the story. But it was when Paul was sailing to Rome, he was going to be presented to Caesar for his trial because he was a Roman citizen. And as a Roman citizen, you had the uh, privilege to be able to be heard and seen by Caesar instead of being tried in the Jewish court. And so he requested that he be transferred to Caesar. They were getting ready to go down to uh, Rome and Paul told him, he said, I don't think this is a good time to go. He said, uh, you probably ought to wait it out. Well, they didn't listen to him. Uh, a lot of times people don't listen to the preacher when he warns of sin and, and storms that are gonna be along the way. And so, the uh, verse number 11 says, nevertheless, in chapter 27, verse number 11, nevertheless, the centurion believed the master of the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken by Paul. And then they, they, they began to sail along. And as they were going along in life, doing their own thing, one of the worst storms they'd ever encountered came up. And, and a lot of times in our lives, we're going along and we're doing our thing and we're, we're working our jobs. A lot of times people have said, you know, you get up in the morning, you go to work, you go home, you eat dinner, you go to bed, you get up in the morning, you go to work, you eat dinner, you go to bed, you get up the next morning, you go, and, and you just, and, and life is life. And then somewhere along the journey, one of the worst storms you've ever faced in your life just jumps full in your face. And, and, and it just, it just, I mean, it almost knocks you for a loop and, and you're just going along. And, and we talked about that little, that little phrase of the hope that we've been here uh, all along. And in, uh, in, in, in chapter 27 there, they, they get to a place and it says in verse number 23, it says, for there stood by me this night, the angel of God, whose I am and whose I serve. And then in verse 25, he says, be of good cheer for I believe God. And it, and it goes on and it talks about how that Paul has, has warned them of the impending danger. He's told them you ought not to go that way. Uh, he, he's told them that it's not a good idea. And, and all of the things that, that Paul has told them. And a lot of times we sit in the church and we listen to the preacher warn us of sin and the consequences of sin and the consequences of doing this or that. I, I look around this church and all of the teenagers and young people that are in here and I stand up here and I teach in Sunday school and I tell them about you know the decisions you make and the choices you make or the choices you're going to have to live with and you decide you're going to leave church out of your life and you're going to leave God out of your life. Well, don't be surprised if God leaves you out of his life too. You know, you make your choices and you have 
have to live with them. Yes, God died for us. Yes, he paid for our penalty. Yes, he forgave us a long time before we ever asked for forgiveness. But if we leave God out of our life, then we have no choice. And we're talking about well, why does God allow this stuff to happen in schools? Because you kick God out of the schools. And so if, if we're going along and Paul has warned them and he's told them and he's talked to them about you really ought not to go. And they decided they were going to do it anyway. And how many times in our life have we made some stupid decisions that we're going to do it our way anyway. And then the storms come and we act surprised when the storms come after we've decided we're going to do it our way and in our time and God can just go take a flying leap somewhere. And, and we don't actually say that out loud, but when we go against the scripture, that's what we're saying. Mm -hmm. And so then the, the, the part that every single one of us are probably going to come to at some point in our life, if you haven't already, is in verse number 20. And when neither the sun nor the stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest to lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was taken away. Mm. You ever gotten to that place in your life to where you felt absolutely hopeless? You felt like that there was no reason to go on. You felt like that your whole world came crashing down on you. Maybe it was a family trouble. Maybe it was a job trouble. Maybe it was the death of a loved one. Maybe it was a financial issue. Whatever it was, whatever your storm was, that jumped full in your face. And you felt like that all hope of being saved out of that deal was, was gone. My topic this morning is which boat are you in? These guys were on a ship. They were sailing toward Rome. And a storm came up. And we're going to sail through life on our ship of life. We're going to go down the, the, the current of life. And we're going to make our choices and we're going to make our decisions. And whatever, I, I don't care. See, Paul was just as right with God as anybody could be, but he was in the same storm. See, just because you're in a storm doesn't mean you've done something wrong. Just because you're... Just because you're... Just because you're, just because you're <laughs> I love it when it does that. <laughs> Makes me feel right at home in the mountains again. <laughs> got the echo going on because you know as mountain preachers we, we say the same thing four times you know it's, and we got to do the ha ha the end of it and God said ha <laughs> I just made one time mad oh well um, but 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 every single one of us as long how many of you in here breathing Mary's not <laughs> I'm raising Oh, okay. Oh, you're scared you're going to be called Pentecost and you didn't want to leave it up. Huh? <laughs> Brother, I am Pentecost. There you go. <laughs> I'm an independent, free will Baptocostal. I got them all in my But uh, anyway, it's, it's in, in, in life, if, if you're still breathing, you're going to face storms. That's why we call it life. That's why we call it living. If you didn't have storms along the journey, you wouldn't be alive. And so they're going along, and Paul told them, you probably ought not to go this way. And they decided they were going to do it that way anyway. And then the storm was going to come either way. You see, the storm was already prepared. The storm was already there. Paul said you probably ought not to go because it's going to be a storm. And, and I'm telling you, in your life, there's going to be storms. Some of them are avoidable and some of them aren't. But they got to that place to where it says, neither sun nor stars appeared in many days. You ever, you ever just felt? I, I look at DJ this morning and his, his shoulders hurting. He had a great vacation Bible school and he had barrels and barrels of fun. But he said this morning, his sun's not shining this morning. I put my arms around him while I go and I told him I loved him. I said, how long has it been since somebody told you that? He said, it's been a while. And I don't know what he's going through this particular minute, but I'm telling you this, I'm here for you. And God's here for you. And maybe the sun ain't shining right this minute, but it's going to come up again tomorrow morning. Guaranteed. Has been for a long, long time. I don't know exactly when God created it and put it up there in the sky, but it's been coming up every day. And it'll come again in the morning. You'll be all right. So whatever it is you're going through, don't worry about it. Okay? You believe me? Yeah. All right. Sorry, the rest of you folks who are listening. I'm just talking to him right now. <laughs> well, one more thing. You said I wasn't breathing, but when I breathe, I proclaim his name. Yahweh. Every, every, every breath you take. Every breath you take. But, but it got to that place in life says that all hope 
that we should be saved is gone. I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a hopeless situation. That's, that's a place where none of us want to be. Is that place where all hope is gone. You know it's genetic, right, Tim? I know. It's, it's genetic, I know. <laughs> now, I want to ask you this one. How many of you are going through a storm this morning? One, two, three, four, five. I'll take that. Six. Calm before the storm, or <laughs> no? If, if you're in the storm right now, all of us are in a calm before the storm. You're either in one, or you're going to go in one, or you just got out of one. But right this particular minute, how many of you feel like you're in a storm? We had six so far. All right, and uh, but I, I want to encourage you. Now, how many of you are in this storm and you feel like that all hope is gone right this minute? One. God, I come to you this morning on behalf of DJ. God, you know he's at a place in his life to where his whole world is spent. And God, you know all of the details of his little world. And I know right now at 17 years old, he thinks it's spinning out of control. But God, I just ask you to take control of his life. Take control of his heart. Take control of his head. God, you said by the renewing of our mind, we're transformed. God, I just ask you to touch his thought pattern, to touch his heart, to help him, God, to comfort him, to wrap your loving arms around him, and let him know that all hope is not gone. And whatever it is he's facing, God, I just ask you to intervene in a very special way, that before this day is over, that he would know that you love him and that you are in charge of his life. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. See, when we think all hope is gone, it's when God's just getting started. Because I'm going to go back now to Lamentations, chapter number three in the Old Testament. It's right before Ezekiel. So if you find Ezekiel, it's a pretty long book. So flip through your pages till you see Ezekiel and then back up. Because in Ezekiel chapter, I mean, sorry, in Lamentations chapter 3, Lamentations is what it means is sorrow, it means sadness, it means crying. And right now, DJ and others are going through a time of sorrow. And it says here in verse number 18, And I said, My strength. And my hope is perished from the Lord. Remembering my afflictions and my misery and the wormwood and the gall. And my soul hath them still in remembrance and is humbled in me. Our thoughts, they just bombard us with, with negative, with sadness. with, with it, it, It's our thought pattern. That's why when I prayed for DJ, by the renewing of our mind, we're transformed. If we get our head right, when I was playing sports and everything, they always tell us, you know, don't worry about where the feet are going. Follow the head. Because where the head goes, the rest of the body follows. 
if you're a lineman, if you're a basketball player, if whatever sport you, you, you follow that person head, where that head goes. We always talk about doing head fakes and stuff like that, you know, and, and stuff like that, and, and, and hand fakes. But you follow the head. You watch that head. You, work, you watch where the head's going because where the head goes, the rest of the body follows. If you're a lineman, you watch where the head goes. If you're a quarterback, you watch where the head goes. If you're a receiver, you keep your eye on the ball. <laughs> but, but you, but you, you, I've never been a receiver. I was too short and fat. <laughs> but, but, he, but, but, but he says, when our hope is gone, he, he's, these, these verses, he, he's reminding himself of how sad it is and how bad it is and how hope is gone and all that kind of stuff. It sounds like the very same thing over in Acts when they said all hope of being saved was gone. But then look at the next verse. But then he says, then I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. If I just start changing my thought pattern, if I start thinking about the goodness of God and how many times he's brought me through. Look at the next verse. For the Lord is my poor. Well, let's back up a little bit. Then I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we're not consumed. Behold, his compassions, they fail not. They're new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore I will hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. You see, we like to freak out. We like to get all spastic. There's one particular family I know of that every single one of them, they freak out at a moment's notice. They just boom! Explode! <laughs> and, 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 and God says, just quietly wait. Just quietly wait. Just, just quietly wait. We get all, we get all freaked out. We get all nervous. We get all scared. We get all, we, we just, God says, just, just chill. Even in the worst storm ahead, if you remember, if you read the rest of that chapter over in Acts, the ship did crash, but every single one of them were saved. Some of them floated to shore on boards. Some of them, some of them floated to shore on boards. Some of them had to swim, but they all saved. They all made it to shore safely. The boat didn't. But the people did. Your boat not, might not sink. I mean, might not stay afloat. Whatever it is you're depending on may not last. But what God has prepared will last. And if you remember the rest of the story, when he got to the island, they built a big fire. And so Paul was going to help out. And they backfired on him, just like some of the stuff I do. Some of the stuff you do. You try to help out, and it backfires on you. He gathered up sticks to him, throw it on the fire. And a snake jumped out and beat him on the hand. And they thought, oh, oh, crap, he must be a demon. But God had other plans. Amen. God had other plans. He just shook it off. Shake it off, CJ. Shake it off, baby. You're 17 years old. Shake it off. Ain't nothing in this life worth weighing down you that bad for. It don't make no difference what you're facing. It ain't that heavy. And if it is, you got some folks around to help you carry it. Amen. And, and more than us, you got the Holy Spirit of God. And God said, like, and the sun popped out. God said, there's another light. The moon popped out. And God said, there's some little lights and all the stars popped out. Yeah. Don't worry about it, baby. It's okay. And, and, and I'm not just talking to that baby. I'm talking to all these babies. Whatever it is you're facing. Whatever it is that's got you all stressed. Whatever it is that's got you all hopeless. Then I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. That was a verse that God woke me up with the other night. Therefore I have hope. When I start thinking right, therefore I have hope. Psalm 31, 24 says, Be of good courage. He strengthens your heart and all you that hope in the Lord. Psalm 42, 5 says, When thou art cast down, O my soul, why are you disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Psalm 71, 14, But I will hope continually and yet praise him more and more. The worse it gets, the louder your praise ought to get. The worse it gets, the more you ought to be shouting hallelujah. Amen. The more, the, the worse it gets, the more you ought to be telling the devil to go on back to hell where he belongs and love God and praise God and excel about Amen. God. I talked Amen. about last week, rejoicing evermore. Amen. Get excited about God. We get excited when things go wrong. We fuss and cuss and throw things. We need to get that excited about God's goodness. We need to jump and shout and praise him as loud as we fuss and cuss. Psalm 146, 5 says, Happy is he, the God of Jacob, for his health, whose hope is in the Lord his God. How many of you want to be happy? Yeah, I do. <laughs> so do I. 
I am animalistic, baby. Little noises drive me crazy. <laughs> Clicking pins, flipping straws, flipping fingernails. You want to get on my nerves quick? You do any of them things. <laughs> and I know he is eight years old. You're eight years old, right? Eight years old sitting in church and listening to that crazy, but you got to have him hands with it. <laughs> Twiddle your thumbs. This works real good. You know how to do that? There you go. Do that. There you go. All of you just do that. There you go. That's, that's quiet and I can deal with that. But this drives me up a tree. <laughs> Blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord, whose hope the Lord is. You see, we hope in our bank accounts. We hope in our money. Barry said, well, I ain't got much, but here it is. God don't need much. God don't need much. He took a couple of biscuits and some fish. He took, he, he took some dirt. And healed a guy's eyes. He just said, Lazarus, come out of there. I know he said, Lazarus, come forth. But Jesus was suddenly, he said, Lazarus, come out of there. <laughs> was it once, a time, once upon a time? No, it ain't once upon a time. But y'all ain't going to believe this. <laughs> now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope. I preached not long ago about the saucer running over, drinking from the saucer. That abounding in hope. Your cup's running over into the saucer. Barry, you old enough to remember folks drinking out of the saucer, right? My grandma. Yeah, there you go. You know, it's, it's just, God is so good to us. God takes care of it. Yes, you've got a couple of storms along the journey. Yes, you've got a couple of problems along the journey. But God is so good. Every single morning you open up two gifts. Every single morning you get up and you're able to hear. Well, some of you are able to hear. <laughs> they got tools for that. Y'all refuse to wear them. How, how, how do y'all like it if I come in here? Well, folks, I will read the scripture, but, but I'm too proud to wear my glasses. So I can't. Bunch of cotton picking here at eight on. Jeez, people. You ain't that vain. <laughs> Where was I at? Oh, yeah, hoping. Now, it ain't all about you. Look at the last part of that verse. It's just through the power of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Yes, I know you can't do it on your own. Yeah. I don't care how super spiritual you are. You can't do it on your own. You've got to have God. You've got to depend on God. You've got to trust in God. You've got, you've, got, you've got to put all your cares on God. Why? Because He cares for you. He cares for you. See, when you're sad, He's sad. Because he says in his word, and when you rejoice with those who rejoice, mourn with those that mourn. Which boat are you in this morning? Are you in, then I recall to my mind how good God is. Or are you in the other boat and all hope that we should be saved was gone? Which <laughs> Okay, we got, we, we got one in each boat so far. <laughs> the rest of you ain't voting, so... But it's your choice which boat you get on. See, you can get up in the morning and you can be sad about everything and everything's going to go wrong and everything's going to be bad and the boss ain't going to like me. The boss didn't like you to start with, so don't worry about it. <laughs> you, know, and you can whine and pout and grump and gripe and snap at everybody that comes in contact with you and you can be on that boat because all hope is gone. Or you can have the very same problem and you recall to your mind of how good my God is. Amen. See, it's your choice. I can't convince you. I can't direct you on the boat. I can show you where the ramps are. You can get on whichever boat you want to. And I'm telling you this morning, I know some of you are going through some stuff, but you choose which boat to get on. You can get on the whiny boat. <laughs> And Captain Kathy will meet you on the right. Sorry, sorry, it's not great. Or you can get on the other boat. Melon. <laughs> that apparently Melon's the skipper of. I think he's more like Gilligan, but that's beside him. <laughs> but it's it's seriously, it's 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 our choice. I know storms are hard. I've been through my share. I told Rose this past week, 30 years of people stabbing you in the back talking about you, disagreeing with everything you say. You 
preach as best you can and as hard as you can. And somebody's going to gripe about it. Somebody's going to complain about it. I, I, I will never get over. Well, I was listening to one of your videos and it was too loud. Well, you ain't got a knob on your phone that says, up and down? Good Lord, you ignorant people. <laughs> Am I being made fun of again? <laughs> okay. Someone said, let's eat faster. <laughs> okay, I know that there's not, not on phones anymore, okay? But I'm still from old school where you get up and you walk over to the TV and you turn the channel to the other two channels you have and you hold the aluminum foil out in the air and you stretch your leg out so you can reach the far off channels. See, y'all didn't know I was that athletic, did you? I'm from the generation you put that aluminum foil on your head to protect you. <laughs> when you leave here today I want you to know that there's hope when you leave here today I want you to know that there's hope I don't want you just to hear about hope I don't want you just to say pastor said we can have hope I want you to know when you leave here today that there is hope and you can have it if you choose it because the verse says then I recall to my mind it didn't say somebody else recalled it to my mind it didn't say pastor reminded me of it it didn't say it says I recall to my mind every single one of us can think about our lives and see how God has been good, so good to us yes you've had storms along the journey yes you've had trials along the journey and you're going to have some more I'm not a doomsday preacher but you're going to have some more this country is going to get worse and worse because God told us it was. And it ain't about Biden. It ain't about Harris. It ain't about Trump or any of the rest of those liars up in Washington. It's about our God. It says he's the begun a good work in you will complete it. And now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. That you may be abound. 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 I like my wallet to abound. I like my chocolate cake saucer to abound. <laughs> when, when, when Tiffany brings in that big pan of banana bread, I abound. I bound over and I take it with me when I go. I, I like I like abounding. I, I have an ammunition room that's full of ammunition. I have a gun safe that's full of guns. I see no point in having empty stuff around. I was talking to one of Kevin's friends yesterday. Matter of fact, y'all pray for him. He says, I'm something to the effect of, I'm too bad to be saved. Ooh, nobody's that bad. Nobody is beyond the reach of God. So y'all pray for him. Kevin likes him, so he's important to us. Because Kevin, just like the rest of us, don't want to see any of our friends go to hell. No. Nobody is outside of the reach of God's hand. I mean, you think about some of the folks that God used in the Bible. I mean, they were liars, they were murderers, they were adulterers, they were cheaters. God still saved them and used them. So He can use you too. Even those of you without any hope. Even the captain of the hope boat. <laughs> Or the no hope boat, whichever. <laughs> That's what we ought to do. Does anybody make those custom made bumper sticker things anymore? Does anybody make those? <laughs> we, we don't get one for Gabby's car. It says the no hope boat. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. This is my prayer for you today. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace. And the only way you're going to get it is recall to your mind. And your mind is your battleground. And all of us have one. I don't care how super positive you think you are, there's a bad thought that comes through there once in a while. And it's yours and my job to defeat it. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word that encourages, that strengthens, and guides us, and teaches us, and convicts us. God, do whatever is necessary in our lives this morning. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Amen.